Hello there, welcome back. Today I will discuss the effect the pardoned bush turkeys have on the success or failure of the new administration. Or more precisely, how President Obama's obsession with bipartisan participation seriously jeopardizes his goal of rescuing the economy. Before I go any further, I want to make clear that I supported Barack Obama from day one and still do, and that I believe that his success is a matter of national security, and therefore alone must be defended against any Al-Qaeda sympathizers, any neocons, anyone who puts his personal or party interest above the interest of the nation, and that his economic policies must be defended against anyone who lacks the intellectual flexibility to understand the most simple structured principles of economics and or lacks the ability to learn from past mistakes. Having said that, the events of the last 50 days have shown that the Republicans in charge not only do not have the intellectual flexibility to deal with a failing economy, they are clearly incapable of learning from failure. Even more serious, by wishing Obama's policies to fail, they are de facto sympathizers with Al-Qaeda, which has the exact same goal as revealed in the Jerusalem issue brief of December 28, 2004. Moreover, in pursuing their goals, they are not even embarrassed to boldly lie into the faces of the public, invent facts or deny history, as long as they focus on their goal 2010. Allow me to discuss as an example the catastrophic consequences of allowing Bush appointees selected for political reasons only to serve in the Department of Justice to continue there. As I will show in a second, that policy makes it impossible for Eric Calder to prosecute or even investigate criminals whose name pops up every time something fishy surfaces, from assassinations to election fraud. You may or may not remember my clip entitled A Skew to a Kill. The report concerning the murder of Florida's Department of Transportation's investigator Raymond Lemme, who was found dead in a Valdosta, Georgia motel two weeks after he told the witness that the case of Thomas Feeney's election fraud software order went all the way to the top, as high as you can imagine. We have a witness who we believe will testify that Raymond Lemme had told the witness that all the way to the top means Karl Rove. Ray Lemme's death was quickly ruled a suicide. The flashcard holding the pictures of the crime scene claimed to have malfunctioned. We got hold of the flashcard files and found that they had been erased. What these guys did not know was that an erased file can be recovered. Contrary to the finding of the police chief of Valdosta, a Republican, we found clear evidence that Raymond Lemme had been murdered. The pictures show clear pre-mortem trauma to the face and the neck consistent with choking. We also have a witness who we believe would be able to testify who called the police chief and suggested to rule this a suicide. Here's another case, the case of the GOP Bush McCain information technology guru Mike O'Connell, who had designed a network that bypasses the official White House network and linked directly to the GOP web and at least to certain senators. In other words, any critical, potentially illegal or incriminating communication was managed via an independent network that was not subject to subpoenas. However, O'Connell's activities of managing election results and detouring them through out-of-state Republican-controlled servers became known to an Ohio-based attorney who filed a suit against the election supervisor and subpoenaed O'Connell. Soon thereafter, attorney Cliff Arnebeck was informed that Karl Rove, why does his name pop up again? had threatened O'Connell that the DOJ would prosecute his wife for some bogus allegations if O'Connell did not take the fall for some election fraud or manipulation. 
Shortly thereafter, O'Connell noticed that somebody had tampered with his plane. Indeed, he was warned not to use his plane any further. The Ohio attorney filed a demand with then Attorney General Mukasey to give protection to O'Connell, yet Mukasey didn't give a hoot. Despite the warnings, on December 19, 2008, O'Connell took his plane to fly to Akron, Ohio. He crashed three miles short of the airport. So much for taking the fall. In any case, there are witnesses for the threat made by Karl Rove against O'Connell. Oh, the plane wreck was investigated by the FAA, who I'm sure secured all the evidence found. Let's look at another case, the case of former Governor Siegelman, a Democrat who wanted to establish a lottery in Alabama to better fund education. He allegedly enticed a friend to come up with $500,000 for the lottery system, which his friend did. Just about at the time when Alberto Gonzalez had fired a number of deputy attorneys for refusal to prosecute bogus allegations against Democrats, one of the DOJ's new hires began a case against Siegelman. The federal prosecutor, the wife of a Republican campaign consultant for Siegelman's election opponent, alleged that Siegelman rewarded the donor of the money for the lottery system with a position. After a number of strange things happened during the proceedings, including the judge a Republican refusing to consider evidence of a political prosecution, the case ended with a conviction of both the donor and Siegelman. On appeal before the 11th Circuit, known for its tolerance for ex parte contacts, the case landed before a panel, normally assigned randomly, that consisted of Republican judges only. The media reported about the irregularities in the proceedings, and guess what? Karl Rove's name popped up again. Indeed, according to a sworn affidavit of Republican attorney Jill Simpson, here shown in the relevant parts only, Rob Riley, the successor governor for Alabama, Bill Canary and Jill Simpson held a telephone conference. William Canary is a Republican campaign consultant in Alabama. His wife is the United States Attorney for the U.S. District Court for the Middle District of Alabama. During the conference call, Bill Canary admitted that he had talked to Karl Rove and made sure that Karl Rove had contacted the DOJ to prosecute Don Siegelman. Okay, back to the Bush turkeys in the Department of Justice. How the hell can you expect Eric Holder to do his job when those who do the work for him are politically motivated? I am a reluctant admirer of Bill Clinton. But I have to say that his approach to fire all attorneys and hire a new slate was highly effective. Congress began to look into the Siegelman affair, but as usual, the investigation fizzled away. Congress is infested with nincompoop wussies incapable of doing anything right. If there is one thing I respectfully disagree with Barack Obama, it is his position that he does not want to look back. That effectively means that serial killers, racketeers and God knows what other criminals can continue without punishment and make your and my life miserable. By the way, I informed White House Counsel Greg Craig of a number of crimes committed by elected officials by certified mail. No interest whatever. Now. That worries me. All right. Have a beautiful day. See you tomorrow.